Ladies and gentlemen, this is UX and this is Russian explosion in Poland. What the f Wagner refuses Russian order. Uh, somebody told me in the comments something about that, apparently, a, you know, a week ago or something, about the Wagner forces, something. I'm pretty sure I remember some comment like that. There's a problem there or something. Breaking news with the enforcer. Yeah, this is from the enforcer, obviously. Another update. Why Poland? At this point, like, what the f What the hell are you doing, man? Right? It's like, don't you have enough problem? Now you're gonna, like, poke at NATO countries now? Like, ah... Uh, you want you want to increase the pressure now so Poland joins the war as well. Why would Russia cause any explosion in Poland? Doesn't even make sense. Like your country is under attack right now. Ukrainians are like invading you right now. You think picking fight with the Poland is the way to go? I'm guessing it, it's it's gonna be something that they you know like happened by mistake or something, right? Uh, whatever, right? I don't know how it happened. Yeah, probably something by mistake because when the war started, that was happening, right? Some missiles striking in Poland because it's like really close to the place they were trying to attack in Ukraine and shit. I don't know. But at this point, I'm going to say like margin for error is very little. You should, you should focus like you don't do things like this. Why are there explosions in Poland, right? This is not the time to make mistakes, man, right? I don't know where this is going, but this feels insane to me. Right? Like, who's making these decisions? Right? Who's the general or whatever in the charge of military in Russia who's doing this and it's just like, oh, whoops. And why is Putin like, what are you doing? Why did that happen? Like, not getting pissed off. I'm, get, I'm guessing he's going to get pissed off. Right? Because everything's going on right now. Explosion in Poland is not a good news. Right? You don't want to uh, increase pressure there. Right? Where everybody's like, screw it. Like, we're, we're joining the war. If Poland joins the war, Others are going to join as well, right? And that's a problem. You, you don't want to see that problem. And the biggest problem is, I don't want to see Putin and Russia back against the wall type of situation where they use nukes. I don't want to see nukes being used at all, right? Because I know people like, oh, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, it, invasion is probably wasn't going to happen, but it did, right? It's probably not going to happen. It doesn't mean much, right? So if Putin suddenly realizes his back is against the wall, he's going to use nukes. And once somebody uses nukes, anybody can use nukes from there because they're not going to be the first, are they? So now after that, like any nuclear country has potential to use nukes, right? I don't know. That's a problem, right? North Korea has nukes now, right? Many countries have nukes. That's a problem, right? Pakistan economy almost collapsed, few, I guess, a year or so ago. Pakistan military also has nukes. So this is problem, man, right? So this is the panic scenario I always think of whenever I watch videos like this. Like you don't want to put Russia and Putin's back against the wall where they have to use nuke. So whatever general or whatever commander is in charge of need to be careful where they, where, where they don't attack other countries because this is not the time. Ah, well, let's watch this video. I don't know what the context of this is, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah, let's watch it. I'm the Enforcer, and welcome to the breaking news. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support us on Patreon. Link in the description below. Today's breaking news is that a Russian drone has exploded inside of Poland, and Polish authorities have begun a search. We were able to get information just several hours ago that near to the small border uh, town of Tizhivus, on the Polish side of the Ukrainian-Polish border, a Russian drone has impacted the ground and has exploded. We are assuming at this point it is most likely a Shahed 136 drone, as these are the most cheap and numerous kinds of drones that the Russian Federation has used throughout know. the entirety of the war. According to information that we've been able to receive from multiple sources, it does appear that the Polish are beginning a search for the debris of the drone, so that way they can then make an analysis of the situation and find out more about why this attack occurred. According to the information that we have from Nexta, a UAV probably crashed into Polish territory during the Russian attack on Ukraine. During the massive attack on Ukraine, which took place on the morning of August 26, just hours ago, a yet unidentified object entered Polish airspace and apparently landed on Polish territory. This was stated by the operational command of the Polish army. It is reported it was not a missile. The head of the operational command, General uh, Klisch, said that apparently it was an unmanned aerial vehicle. Presumably, it uh, fell near the border town of Tishwis, and a search for the object is underway. We were able to get additional... Did somebody get hurt, or did it, like, crash into, like, open field or something? I'm guessing this, like, the Iran sent a lot of drones to Russia. This is one of those, right? So, somehow, 
it ended up in Poland. A missile ended up uh, ending up in Poland makes sense because missiles are fast and like, uh, you know, like sometimes they can like go off the target and like strike somewhere else. How does drone go all the way to Poland and like crashes? Did it did it go out of hand or something, right? I understand which type of drones we're talking about, but they are not like missile, right? However fast drones are, they're not as fast as missiles. So how does it like, you know, like go all the way to Poland and, uh, you know, like explodes like that? I don't know. I don't know how deep inside the territory it is, but it looks deep enough from the map. So how does it go? I'm guessing it went out of control, like lost the control or something, right? I don't know. Confirmation for this as well from another source inside NK where they did state that Poland has confirmed a Russian suicide drone entered Polish airspace this morning during Russia's massive attack against Ukraine. Uh, Poland has sent soldiers out on a search pattern to go find the drone and then report back where it had impacted, the kind of drone it was, the kind of explosive yield it had, amongst many other additional pieces of information as well about the drone. This drone did explode a pretty decent ways inside of Poland. Tiszewicz is not that close to the border, and technically from the border crossing here in between Poland and Ukraine, which we can see right here, this little town, if it was to explode very close nearby, was an entire 17 miles inside of Poland. To put it into context, the deepest that the Ukrainians have made it into Russia in the Kursk offensive currently, which has been considered a massive breach of the Russian border, has been about approximately 23 miles, meaning that this little, uh, this little incident, if you want to call it little at all, was about as deep as the Ukrainian Kursk offensive has made it into Russia. It's a I'm trying to think what 17 miles look like from where I am. I mean, sure, but then again, in Europe, even the small distance is big because like how all the countries are, right, close together. But 17 miles doesn't feel that long. But then again, for a drone, like I'm guessing it lost control because a missile striking that deep makes sense. Like drone going that deep, like how did you miss mark that badly? So, yeah. It's a somewhat serious ordeal, and if this is the first time that a drone has ever exploded on Polish territory, we will be waiting to see what kind of a backlash or what kind of a response the Polish will give. Throughout the entirety of the war, we have seen that some drones have ended up exploding inside of Romania, but we have never seen an actual response. And considering that the Romanian and Polish governments have slightly different stances on the war in Ukraine and their responses, we're not entirely sure if the Polish are going to be very aggressive in a response against the Russian Federation for this drone violating their airspace and not only that, exploding on the territory of Poland as well. We will largely have to wait and see what kind of response they get because we do understand... I don't think they're going to be aggressive because of a drone strike, especially if nobody's hurt or something. But yeah, it's an issue. I guess there'll be warnings, like make sure it doesn't happen again type of shit. Because I'm pretty sure I watched some news headline or something or like some video notification. But Poland was like preparing if fight does comes towards them or something and shit like this happens. Like, yeah, that could be problematic. The title is a Russian explosion in Poland. I'm like, what oh, the fuck? Is this escalating more? And the Polish are openly unfriendly against the Russian Federation and the Republic of Belarus. But we do not know if this is going to extend onwards into outright direct actions against the Russian Federation in Belarus, either economically or militarily. We also have to consider that the United States of America is most likely in the background trying to once again uh, curtail any Polish response that may be given. And so for this reason, we may see that nothing major comes out of this. But nevertheless, it is a serious incident considering that this Russian drone did not just land a mile or two miles into Poland. It landed 17 miles roughly inside a Polish airspace, a major breach, and not only that, a clear violation of Polish national sovereignty. And this came right on the cusp of a massive drone and missile attack that did occur last night, as Russia has once again tried to target Ukraine's energy grid, knocking out vital energy systems. For example, this dam that is uh, at the very bottom of the Sea of Kiev, which we can see in this clip, was hit and damaged by incoming Russian fire. See them observing the damage once again, showing that it's pretty extensive. And we were able to see in another clip as well more damage that had been caused by the missile that exploded onto this reservoir.
Ukrainian air defense was hard at work last night, shooting down a large number of missiles and drones, but it appears that they were not able to shoot down all of them, and some of them were able to make it to their target and cause significant damage, much like we're seeing right here. Another missile that was apparently targeted towards this dam ended up being shot down and its remnants, or really the intact missile, ended up slamming into the Sea of Kiev near to the dam. And we can see that clip right here. Ебать його, сука, в жопу! Ту, бля! Пизда! A pretty serious incident. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I hear somebody speaking in that language, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing stalker again? Ah, oh, that is so insane, right? Ah, uh, the miss, that was insane, like, miss, that was actually captured, like, exploding. I'm not gonna lie, like, I would be, you know, if I if I even have a whiff of thing, like, okay, missile is coming, I'll probably be under, sh try to find shelter or something, because you don't know where the fuck missile is gonna land, but I guess, yeah, that's what it is, right? Yeah, did I miss an update or something? Because I'm obviously like apparently Russia attacked uh, Ukraine with missiles and things. I didn't know that, so I guess there was some response, right? Not I'm not response towards Ukraine, but I don't know if it's there's any response in like Kursk or something, right? I'm pretty sure I missed an update or something. And for sure, and once again showing that the Russians are trying to continue their acts to pretty much completely cripple the Ukrainians and stop them from having a usable energy grid, which would greatly impact the civilian population, putting a heavy strain on the Ukrainian government and can also jeopardize or severely Winter's the coming, right? inside of Ukraine as well. We'll be trying to get a better analysis in the upcoming days about what kind of damage was actually caused by the Russian Federation's attack overnight on Ukraine, but it does appear that it was a very large one, and even with the Ukrainian air defense trying to intercept as many of the incoming air targets as possible, it doesn't appear that it was completely successful. Moving on from that and on to Kursk, we did also get to see that within the Kursk region, apparently the Wagner never arrived in Kursk. This is something that we've been stating on this channel for a while now, because we've never really gotten official confirmation or word for that matter that Wagner ever arrived inside of the Kursk Oblast to help with the defense of Kursk. And according to information that we now have, the Wagner group itself claims to no longer be fighting in Ukraine. Wagner mercenaries are operating only in Belarus in Africa and are not fighting alongside the Russian army in Ukraine, the Wagner group claimed in a statement on Telegram on the 26th of August, as of today. Yeah, but that could be deception, right? They want you to think that type of way. I don't know who, but I'm, uh, one of the enforcer re reactions I did like a week ago or something, somebody told me in the comments like Wagner group is not like... Uh, coordinating with Moscow. Some, somebody commented that. I didn't know how accurate the information was. But if that's the case, like, I don't know. Yeah, the, you know, the leader of Wagner is the son of the former leader. Is that what that is, right? Because I'm pretty sure, like, it, it's always interesting. People, uh, you know, comment down, like, you get more information. I always take it with a pinch of salt, like, everything. But then again, like I said, all information, I take it like that, right? So somebody did, told me about, uh, you know, that the Wagner group is not really coordinating well with the Moscow or something. Like, they're not... Yeah, you know, uh, you know, like re accepting orders and things. Basically, uh, I didn't know how accurate that was, but if this is the case, I guess that's true, right? Like Wagner is not directly taking orders and shit like that. I don't know. It could make sense because the former leader uh, clashed with Putin and like mysteriously plane crashed. And if his son is in charge of Wagner, yeah, he's gonna bitter, you know, like uh, resentment and things like that. So yeah, it makes sense. This means that the Russians never were able to count on the Wagner reinforcements that were arriving into the Kursk Oblast, or at least supposedly were going to be arriving in the Kursk Oblast, and for this reason, this once again may have led the Russians to have a severe lack of manpower as they realized that the Wagner was never going to arrive, and they desperately had to find another way or another form of manpower to be moved into the area as quickly as possible to try and stop the Kursk offensive from moving on in the kind of direction and speed that it has been for some time. It's also interesting to note that the Wagner made specific mention that they are in Belarus and Africa only. 
this is a very interesting statement for Wagner to make, as it does lead us to believe that the Wagner forces may be with the Belarusians in the Gomel area built up along the border and may be helping to fortify or strengthen the Belarusian armed forces or to ensure that they are more loyal to the central government through fear of reprisals that could be coming down the line any minute or at some point in the future. We'll be trying to find out more information about that as well. There's, today's stories are coming out and they're pretty much fresh off the press, so we don't have a lot of deep information to go on for each of them, but we are starting to see the beginning of many new stories and many new, new different paths that the story is taking so far in the Ukraine war, like with the Wagner and what they're doing, and with the massive attack that occurred on Ukraine overnight, and of course the massive attack that we saw near the Kiev hydroelectric power plant. And not only that, the explosions that occurred near Tychowice inside of Poland as yesterday as well, really just a few hours ago. The, the, all of this stuff is fairly new, and so we're still trying to get our best story out about this at the moment with the limited amount of information that we have considering the recency of these stories. But not only that, within the city of Omsk, we also got to see that a refinery within Omsk exploded and began to burn. We don't know what actually caused the explosion at this refinery, this was what we believe to be out of range of Ukrainian drones, so if anything hit it, we wouldn't really have that good of a clue. We can also see the fire and the smoke enveloping a large amount of the refinery right here, and we can also see it from a local Gazprom gas station uh, with some kind of a weird, uh, extremely short, kind of Quasimodo-style truck sitting here. Yeah, it's the angle, man. It's ultra-wide photo. It looks like that from the angle. I don't think it is weird like that. It's, yeah in front of the gas station. This thing is probably the biggest crime against uh, truck design and truck trailer design that I've ever seen in my life. Probably worse than the oil refinery that's burning in the background, really. I mean, this is a uh, this is a bigger affront to anyone than that. But anyways, moving on from that, it does seem... I like how we just analyze all this shit and that pissed him off. ...though that there may be a campaign either by Ukrainian partisans or by some other external power that's still once again trying to attack Russian oil refineries and knock them out, and hopefully their progress continues to go well. As the more refineries that are knocked out, the worse off the Russian oil and gas industry is, and the worse off their stockpiles are to be able to keep the entire nation running on into the future. We also got a little bit of additional information that there were some reports of explosions around the area of Tel Aviv. We have not been able to get a large amount of information about these explosions. We're assuming that they may be a part. Yeah, there you go. Ah. I like how he just throws in Middle Eastern news in the last minute. Like, oh, it's just also that is also happening. No, nothing small. It's just like some explosion and things. Yeah, that's the world we live in. By the way, in a one minute news, I'm going to give you some devastating news from a certain place, which is going to affect a lot of people. Yeah, this, you know, this is happening everywhere. All news channel, everything. By the way, this also happens is breaking news. It's like, it's normal now. That's the world we live in. Ah, this is, I'm not going to lie, this is a panicky situation, right? I know people like, okay, you panic every time. Like, just, you know, I'm somewhat of a realist, right? Sometimes, like, you know, I see a pattern. And it does emerge over time, right? Uh, when the Russian thing started with the, when they're like, oh, there are tents in like close to Ukraine. And I'm like, mm, maybe this is, maybe this is like uh, OCD level shit I'm doing, but I don't, I don't like this. Something, something might happen. And even I didn't see like, oh, come on, you're probably like panicking too much, but it did happen. Ukraine shit did happen, right? So I've noticed like sometimes, yeah, I, I can see how I'm panicking too much, but there's a reason behind that. And like sometimes things does happen, right? So the nuke shit might feel like a too distant thing, and it is right now. But you don't know where things are going, right? If Russia keeps losing it, if Russia is keep, uh, you know, getting pressure, if Poland joins, F France joins, suddenly, slowly, other, other countries joins the war as well, and Russia is, like, beaten down really back, Russia might use nukes. And those nukes might be devastating, right? And that will set a precedent and chain reaction. Yeah, we're fucked after that. That might be too much of a panic scenario, but it can happen. There's a possibility of that, which is kind of fucked up. So I, every time I see things like that, that's the thought I come to my head. Like, if Russia's back against the wall too much, they might use nukes, right? I don't know. So right now, they're not there, right? Right now, they're still conducting, like, missiles and things, and they're like, okay. But if, like, this Poland thing goes out of hand, and Poland says, fuck it, like, this is too much. 
right? We are joining the war, which is not going to happen. I don't see that happening. But if that happens, F France was talking about like sending uh, soldiers like a few months ago. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Who knows where things going to escalate? Maybe a missile will strike somewhere else beside Poland into NATO uh, country, and there you go. We don't know what is the butterfly effect of things, right? I don't know. All right, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.